Tears unnumbered ye shall shed, and the Valar will fence Valinor against you, and shut you out, so that not even the echo of your lamentation shall pass over the mountains. The Silmarils, the light of Valinor, were stolen by the Dark Lord Morgoth in the first age of the world. Theanor, eldest and most beloved prince of the Noldor, proposed a dreadful and irrevocable oath to his sons, never to rest until the Silmarils were in their hands, and to make war upon any who should withhold them, even their own kind. After four awful battles, the Noldor finally attacked Morgoth, allying the kingdoms of men and elves, but Morgoth's spies were amongst them. The forces of Middle-earth were crushed, the sons of Feanor were scattered, and many beloved lands were lost in rivers of flame. Durgon, high king of the Noldor and wisest of the high elves, shielded his city from the Dark Lord's eyes, letting none enter nor leave. Courage remained. One of the Silmarils came to the hero Beren, who cut the jewel from the crown of Morgoth himself. And Turgon sent messengers to ask for aid from the Valar, the spirits of Iluvatar, who give order to the world. The king of the Sindar commanded the dwarves to set the Silmaril into a necklace. continued to obey their terrible oath and attacked. They failed, and once again, the world of men stood apart from that of the Noldor. Hope now lies only in deep places the Dark Lord has yet to touch.
Lord Uma. You have lingered here too long. A doom approaches the hidden city. I've searched for years. The city cannot be found. King Turgon awaits the one who will come from Nebrast to warn him of the coming of the Dark Lord. You are the one who will come to war of the House of Hador. You will find Gondolin. My father stood by Turgon in his knee. But what avail shall a mortal man be among such high folk of the West? The Dark Lord does not think much of the race of man. In this high of his highest power, my kin may do nothing against him. Your people, their vigilance goes yet unmarked. Then surely a great king of men should go in my place, not a former slave of Easterlings. Your father died in Turgon's arms. Great good shall come from you and I, he said. As you command, what words shall I say to Turgon? The words will arise in your mind, and they will flow through your mouth as they would mine. Speak them and fear not, and then do as your heart and your valor demand. I will. We'll send you a guide tomorrow, Veranwe, the last of the mariners from the west, sent by King Turgon. Now go forth, lest the seas devour you. Long have I gazed upon this Silmaril, which my father and mother brought beyond hope out of Angband. But even in all its beauty, it appears to me as a sign that death has come so early. The beauty of your mother as she wore it was too much for mortal lands. I will use this stone to set anew the glory of Doriath.
The hands of Theonor seldom at rest. Within the jewel, the glory of the blessed realm is preserved imperishable. Even in the darkness of the deepest treasury, the Silmarils of their own radiance shine like the stars of Varda. I hope you do not fall too deeply in love with that jewel, for there may no longer be a place for your queen. <laughs> I hope you don't think me as arrogant as Feanor and Nimoth. His greatest work can now do some good in Arda. My father. Cut this trinket from the black crown of Morgoth himself. Any work of evil that should touch this again shall be scorched and withered. I would like to pass it to Elwyn. <laughs> our daughter? What would our son say? I sit alone after seven years at sea. I wonder, had I not left my home, could I have been a father, a lord? Will I ever again see King Turgon, Lady Idril? Have the sons of Feanor rejoined my people, or do they still hunt their precious jewel? Would any good come if they found it? Welcome. Long have I labored in the unrelenting sea. Tell me, have great tidings befallen since I walked the land? Is the shadow overthrown? Have the hidden people come forth? The shadow lengthens. The hidden remain hid. Who are you, Lord? Of the kindred of men? I am. And you are Voronwe, the last mariner of the ships that sought the west from the havens of Círdan. I am. Voronwe, son of Voronwe, am I. But how you know my name and my doom, I do not understand. I know, because the Lord of Waters spoke to me yesterday. He said that he would save you from the wrath of the wave, and send you here to be my guide. You've spoken to Uma the Mighty. Then great indeed must be your worth undue. But where shall I guide you, Lord? For truly a great king of men you must be, and many must wait upon your word. Nay. I am an escaped thrall. And I am an outlaw. Alone in this empty land. But I have an errand to Turgon, the Hidden King. By which road may we find him? Many are thrall and outlaw who should be lords of men. But even if you were the highest of your folk, I could not bring you to Turgon. Even if you were to reach the gates of the Hidden City, you could not enter. Turgon will not forget Umo's own words to him about he who shall come from Nevrost when peril approaches his people. I am he that should come. Behold the gear that was prepared for me. And if Turgon will not receive you? Yeah. Then my errand shall be ended. And doom shall prevail. Let's be off. 
If evil has grown while I've wandered, and peril approaches my people, I must go to them. I will lead you to the gate of Gondor, for the wise will not be and save the counsels of Ulmo. Shall we take thought on how we might fare in the wild? Only you know the strength of men. I am of the Noldor. It will take a long hunger and a cold winter to slay me. Summer burns bright in Doriath. You know what must be done. Dior will not just hand over the jewel to the Noldor, even though it is rightfully ours. After Morgoth's victory in the fourth battle, Dior thinks us weaklings. Send word to him. If his wisdom defeats his pride, he will remember how easily we could assail his kingdom. If he refuses us, we march to Doriath with fire and blades. That is not what I suggested. Kill Gorm! Why should a line of thieves linger on when we who've crossed the grinded ice can never return home? You would risk an open assault! No. Send word to Dior. We are of the Noldor, not beasts from the cracks of Agmar. Caligorn, the Easterlings betrayed us. Even our cousins thrust us from their halls to live in exile. Why are the Sindar so different? It matters very little whether the Sindar understand our oath. Thingol refused to hand the Silmaril to the dwarves, and they cut him down. The High King killed by bearded mountain dwellers. You're right. The heir will surely not refuse those to whom the gem truly belongs. Did Tour receive the gifts you left for him? Yes. But he's still a month away. He and his guide might not make it before winter. What? They could freeze. Uncle, calm yourself. This childish notion of a savior is unhealthy, and I won't see you waste away over it. Mm. Perhaps you're right, Meglin. Perhaps he's right? Is my cousin a king now? How dare you? That's enough. Idril, I'll see you at supper. Sorry, I shouldn't have been so rude. It's difficult following the footsteps of your father. Digging all day, with nothing to come back to but a cold bed. You mean everything to me. What sad irony it is that grief and formality have become my morning and night. We are blessed with the last light of the trees, and yet I spend my days in council, presenting myself in polished boot and crown. My body swims in the blood of the fairest in Middle-earth, those who fought alongside Felagund in battle, and those whose voices rang more loudly than the sweetest song of the Ainu. And yet I dream only of tears and torch, steel, and flame. King Thingol is no more, and his Silmaril has passed King Dior. How will Dior wield it? And here you are. What great battle are you training for today? Training? This 
is a dance. War is no dance, though. Isn't it? Haven't you always told me how my grandmother used to dance? Did she not continue to dance while others were away at war? Even as the grasses of Doria faded from green to deepest bronze, and then Baron approached, and laying eyes upon her, his heart was hers. Quite the grand way to tell it. When it is written in history, my way of telling it will be preferred over yours. Is that so? Yes. And in my story, the heroine, the daughter, flies as a swan into the blackest night, casting light where none was. But you, droning on about wolves and oaths and quests and baubles. If only we were swans, Ellen. Sindar cannot fly. But we can live well enough down here. Council away. King Dior. Hilgorm the Fair sends word from Hinlad. He requests you send the jewel of Feanor back with his messengers. Turgon sent me to seek aid against Morgoth, but I lingered, having seen little of the lands of Middle Earth. I wandered, day and night flickering by uncounted, standing knee deep in grass or laying a dream amid the singing of the birds. It was thus I was the last aboard a vessel bound to the west, and no news of any before me had been heard. The great sea is terrible, Tuor. I still feel the fear of it, and mourn the loss of my friends who had gone so long and far with me. How long were you washed ashore before we met? Barely an hour. I counted myself among the hardiest of men, but traveling up the creeks of the Taglin was no food. I've led us as straight as I can without alerting the enemy. Turgon dwells in the north. How far can we go before hope fails? No other choice have we, except to stop here and lie down for the crows. Not ask me to give the gem to the Noldor. To Caligon. How do you know Caligon? Thanar has many sons, the three of which kingdoms lie near Doriath, but Caligon was never far from Gurf and the Corinthian. Together they ambushed my father, attempted to take the Silmaro, but he sent them in shame and held the stone high. By now, they will have met with Caranthir. I do not know the name. Caranthir is a hero among the Noldor. But he's been betrayed too many times. He'll be quick to anger and judgment. 
These kings have hunted the Silmaril for ten of my lifetimes in a month. I cannot return to the West without it. Why not give it to them? Sooner cast it into the sea. It no longer belongs to them, it belongs to my family. As you wish. Your Majesty, the sons of Feanor march upon our borders. And what will they do? Ask more loudly for their precious Silmaril? I don't care if a messenger or the sons themselves come to my doorstep asking. I will not heed the words of treacherous oath takers. But my lord, they're prepared for battle. Kelegorn wishes to frighten us. Nothing more. Then what are our orders, my lord? Orders. Tell them to slither back through the passes of him, lad. Yeah. Gondolin, you will meet many great lords. King Turgon the Wise stands tall in his great tower and protects my people, and beside him stands his nephew Maeglin, lord of the House of the Mole, who constructed the mighty gates himself. And then you will meet Lady Idril, the High King's daughter, as wise as her father, who goes ever barefoot and dances upon the autumn grass. She will teach you endless rhymes of lore and sing them with you, and when you're under the sky in a star-flecked night, a song of home may find your heart. And why should any of them care to meet a mortal man? Or a mariner who should be dead, save for that mortal man's quest, which may yet see us killed. It glimmers like a spike of lonely pearl That mirrors beams forlorn and lights that fade and the sea goes washing round the dark rock where it stands, and ferry boats go by to gloaming lands. Oh, happy, oh, mar happy mariners on a journey long to those great portals on the western shores, where far away consulate fountains leap. leap and dash against night's dragon headed doors, in foam of stars sparkling in the deep, while I alone look out behind. Lord Kelgorn, the king is indisposed. Please rest yourselves and be on your way.
What is it? A company of Mogoth's followers. No, they are not alone in the wild. Forgo the enemy or forgo Turgon. Ugh, the meat of orcs would be a prize. When did our quest become about petty prizes? Ugh, I was a slave for three years in the house of Lorgan. You have no idea what they did. Ugh. Listen to me, Tour. The laws of Gondolin state that none shall approach with enemies at their heels. Rouse the orcs, and I leave you. When I'm through, there'll be none left to follow us. You escaped them once. You would willingly fling yourself back into their net. I escaped with the strength of my arm. Four years alone, abandoned by all but my axe. You are not alone anymore. Then let them be. But may I yet see the day when I need not sneak past a handful of orcs like a cow dog. Then debate no more. Follow me. Who are you? I'm Brunley, your friend. Allah, Eredin and Kuriath, Eredin Barnim. We are close, Umundil. Beyond lies Syria on the fair, a river renowned in song, and its havens, a grey land wrapped in mist, where friends of Ulma have always been welcome. If only we were there. My friend, after we see Turgon, we will travel there. We are nearing the first gate of Gondola. We must choose our words wisely.
friends or foes? We are friends. Keep still and show your faces. I am Vuronwe of the House of Fingolfin. Is my voice forgotten in my own land after a few years? I remember yours, Ekthelion. Then Vuronwe will remember the laws of his land. You were sent forth by the king and have the right to return. This stranger with you will be slain or held captive at the judgment of the guard. Bring him forth so that I may judge. This is strange in you, Vuronwe. We were friends. Why do you make me choose between the laws and our friendship? It would have been enough if you had brought another than Noldor with you. But a mortal man? Strange things happen in the wild, Ecthelion. Other shall the Wanderer return then as he set forth. Mortal man, you have cast eyes on the secret way. Even though you are a friend of Verunwe and dear to him, I should slay you. I am with Verunwe because Lord Ulmo appointed him my guide. I have an errand to Turgon, and to him I will speak it. If I lead you through the Seven Gates, the only way you shall leave is through the door of death. And if I go by that door, then all who dwell here will follow me. Lord of Fountains, will you hinder the Lord of All Waters?
Welcome, man of the land of shadows. Where are my sons? Your sons are in the care of our servants. You coward. Where is the silver? When my brothers and I were ruthlessly cast from Nargothrond, I ruled Dor Caranthia from the beautiful shores of a crystal lake. Men betrayed us through war. The waters of my capital were defiled by the battle of the sudden flame. Men of the House of Hallow, men whom I rescued, balked in my office of cooperation, and chose instead to live in the woods as beasts. You become like them. Not here. Our servants have his sons. They haven't touched the Silmar. Leave them in the forest to rot. Baron's vein line finally ends here. Dior will have left with his maidens and his daughter. We will never find her. No. If forced to flee, they go to Minigroth. Come. We make for the Thousand Caves. Make for the havens of Sirion. I will cut a path for you, Starspray. Father! Your coming was foretold in our books of wisdom, and it was written that a great many things would come to pass once you ventured here. Father of the City of Stone, I am bidden here by Ulmo, who knows the thoughts of the Valar, and who sees the workings of Morgoth behind the Iron Hills. I've been brought here by a secret way to tell you to number your hosts and prepare for battle. Time is ripe. You would have me adventure my people against the terror of the orcs, imperil my city against the fires of Morgoth. That I will not do even if it is the will of Ulmo and all the Valar. Father. If you do not, then Morgoth will possess every mountain of the earth. Please trust in the Valar. Morgoth will fall. The Valar have been of scant help to us. We trust our own city to ward off evil. Silence! I am the King of Gondolin, and no will shall force me against my own counsel. Meglin is right. But your people have built ships. You can sail to Valinor. We have sailed to Valinor. Those ways are long forgotten. My wife died crossing the ice and trying to reach this place. My people have gone to the wide water, never to return. And my daughter still sings for those who have perished in the deep. Your people were devoured by the ice to get here. And they were devoured by the sea, sailing to Valinor again. And for what if they're devoured by fire when Morgoth comes? Morgoth is coming. Don't speak that name here. How do you fear it? Targon, your people can rise in wrath and destroy the Dark Lord. Yes, it is foretold, Father. We came here with a purpose. But this is not what I... Sire, this man means to lead our people to their deaths. Nay, son of Hur, never again shall our people fare to the sea. You are welcome to stay. So shall we.
Kinslayers will be given no quarter in the lands of Elithingal. Turgon will soon close the gates. Not even the Mariners will leave again. I'm afraid you and I will never reach Syria, my friend. I'm sorry, but I cannot stay. Tour? If I were born here, and of your people, I would have a home up on that ledge. We'd go hunting in the wild, learn from each other every day. And when the battle finally came, no one would be alone. Silo Anor Bomenlin. Dior, give it to us. What? My dignity? My name? I have no use for these trifles anymore. They're yours. Another Sindar leader chooses such a sad death. So it is that kings will kill kings. Brothers! We fly to Valinor!
we have lived well enough here. I suppose I will go to the havens of Sirion. Is that it? Your journey done? Your errand sped? Your father will do nothing. I cannot just wait. Your days will go on. Mine will end. My father bids you stay, Tor. Stay here and be in the king's favor. The sons of Feanor unwittingly aid Morgoth, and your people refuse to fight him. If I must await doom, I may as well be at the sea. Just my father. I would have you stay. I would have you see the mornings of Gondolin. The grass be dewed with raindrops, shimmering like a thousand studs of crystal. I would teach you music. The forces of Angband will find this place. I know. I have seen it. What is in Gondolin? I am. Get your father's last words to mine. Great good shall come from you and I. I spent the last seven years wandering, sleeping in caves, hunting. I searched for a land that I'd heard of in legends, Nevrost, where stars shine white. And do you know how I came upon the Lord of Waters? Birds. 
I was so lost that I put my faith in the beating of some bird's wings. I thought they would bring me to where I needed to be. And did they? Yes. Stay here, Charlie. I will. For a while. Alta Elomek.